Hi. As you might have noticed, my name is still the same. I'm still working at Nordia IT Poland as an IT infrastructure specialist. And today I'm going to present a second short talk about some tricks we are using in connection with log file monitoring. Actually, the talk is going to be about two, maybe one trick, one solution and one suggestion. Let's start with the suggestion. Let's skip the details. I've already mentioned that we've got a medium-sized Zabbix setup and it's right there at the core of our IT infrastructure because we are using several monitoring systems and Zabbix is our tool of choice of monitoring the core banking systems, uh, all of the Unix and Linux based hosts and some uh, of the network infrastructure, mainly load balancers. <sighs> The first thing about log file monitoring in Zabbix is it's surprisingly robust. And uh, often uh, people don't realize how much you can do with stuff that comes out of the box with Zabbix. For example, I've encountered several, I've had several talks with people who were amazed that, uh, well, uh, the agent keeps track of the position in the file because they were worried that they had to write their own parser for their own application log because the log is quite heavy and so it would be very slow to parse it the whole log file every time. So a few things that you might keep in mind is that uh, the agent doesn't assume any particular log rotation scheme. So if your file name changes, if your file name uh, matches a pattern and there are multiple files within the directory, it's all taken care of out of the box. And since 2.2, you can also apply a regexp to a log line and extract a specific value, which is very useful in many purposes. So the suggestion I would like to get across is that it's very easy to under underestimate the possibilities that you've already got inside Zabbix. And it's always better to stick with a ready-made tool than to roll your own log parsing system. <coughs> and it's good to look at the documentation once in a while. Now the trick. Uh, I've mentioned that since 2.2 you can easily obtain a part of the log line using a regexp. And what happens is you still have an item type that's text-based, even if you parse out a number. So, if for example, you're mm, filtering out some lines in your application log file and you're gathering a value and then you want to graph it, well, it's still a text value and you cannot graph it directly. But there is a good workaround for it. You can create a calculated item based on the value from the log file and now it just works and we're using this approach in few, few things. And the calculated items are actually quite useful in, in a combination with the log file item uh, because uh, they can be used for any sort of counter you can imagine. You can count the number of occurrences of a specific log pattern. So it's good to keep that in mind. And now a small, small script that we're using. Uh, I've named the section virtual log files because we have an approach that revolves around creating a virtual log item that's applied to each of our Unix hosts. And this item is basically a, some sort of a global log within Zabbix. Why we did this? The problem was that we are very heavily relying on Unix systems. All of our core IT infrastructure is based on Unix systems and within the Unix ecosystem you always find yourself surrounded with an abundance of shell script solutions to wrap around tools provided by IBM, to wrap around some other tools to provide a solution, easy solution for backups, for 
archiving s some sort of files. Sometimes you've got s whole complex setups of file brokers all written in shell. And there is an abundance of shell scripts. There are multiple scripts, multiple authors, but still there is a very common approach to monitoring in all those scripts. Usually the author takes the easy route and just uses the approach, if it breaks, send an email to the administrator. And it's okay. <laughs> There's always the mantra that if it works, don't touch it, don't break it. But still we would love to have the information available in Zabbix, since it's the core of our whole monitoring. So every time you talk to the shell script author and you start to introduce them to Zabbix by explaining the whole host item thing and how things work, you are met with an astonished gaze and uh, a suggestion that, well, he might make those improvements in time. And yet, after a week, after two weeks, nothing changes. So, we've taken another approach. We've developed uh, a small script that hides all the Zabbix stuff underneath it. And it can be used as a simple logger in a way that all of our system administrators understand. So we're using this as a simple way to monitor existing script-based solutions, basically as a drop-in replacement for all those lines when there's send an email to the administrator type of thing. And we're applying a single item per host as a trap that's waiting for sent messages. So it's basically a syslog within Zabbix. <coughs> Last year I provided complete code for my scripts. Uh, I don't think it's necessary right now because it's always best to use the language you're familiar with and bindings that you're familiar with. But if anybody wants the complete source code for the script in Perl, feel free to ask me, I'll send it to you. The thing that gets the job done is the send message subroutine and uh, even if you don't want to implement it, you can still use Zabbix Sender. What's the most important thing is the usage. And the usage is very important for us because actually there's nothing related to Zabbix in it. You just specify the severity and you specify the message and that's it. The host is gathered automatically from the Zabbix agent configuration file and the uh, IP server of the Zabbix, well, it's common to our uh, whole organization. And so uh, this basic script can be used uh, in this manner as a drop-in replacement wherever there is a line, send an email to the administrator within some shell script. What we do in Zabbix then is we wrap around some triggers around this host log item. And the triggers are associated with a host. And for example, if it's a database host, every time we encounter a message with a severity of error, Zabbix automatically notifies our database administrators with an SMS message or with an email. So you could say this is a lightweight, lightweight approach to add Zabbix to some existing solutions with uh, the minimal amount of change. And if you uh, apply those actions and those triggers uh, in a sensible way, then you can add further notifications without the need to add additional actions to this item. So, that's all for my short talk. Are there any questions? How is the trigger reset? Yeah, so, so you have... Uh, uh, you, you, you've uh, registered the fact that a message has arrived. Mm -hmm. So, how does that uh, disappear from, say, the... Well, you can specify that uh, you can uh, have multiple problem occurrences. So, it just takes the action. We are not, uh, we're not using this to provide, for example, uh, 
to specify the time in which an event took place. Right. It's, it's just a drop-in replacement for the email message. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you.